How's it going, everyone? This is Tom from Project X Talk. I'm giving you guys a little bit of my feedback on Battlefield 2042. Currently, if you have Game Pass, you can play the 10 hour free trial of 2042, whether it's the last gen or current gen versions of the game. So I do recommend you guys go out and try it out yourself. But here is going to be my thoughts and I'm going to do no holds barred. This game does not feel really good to play. Now, let me just get into it first. Performance issues. If you have a Series X console, or I, I would imagine a Series S console, the frame rate drops that you're going to get into this game are pretty massive. It does not consistently stay at a locked 60 frames per second. When there's a storm event that happens, which is one of the big features of the game where maybe there's like a tornado that happens in the game, the frame rate then drops immensely as you guys can see in the example here. It is not stable currently. And apparently this is not just an issue on consoles or Xbox specifically. Uh, apparently this is even an issue with PC gamers where if you have like a 3090, this game can still not run at beyond a 90 frames per second um, constantly on ultra settings, which a 3090 is, you know, top of the line graphics card. It should be able to run everything maxed out, no problem. But there's frame drops there too. So clearly there's some sort of optimization issues that DICE EA has to work out on this game. And I really do feel like this game was a little rushed out the door. So, we already had a month delay on Battlefield 2042, as we know, it was supposed to come out back in October. And then before that, we just, we were supposed to get a beta prior to that. However, the beta replaced the launch of the console, and that came out in October. Oh my gosh. How the launch of that went. The beta felt like crap. That should have been a good expectation of what we would expect from the future game once that does launch in November. Currently, it is the early access period. I think the game officially launches on the... Actually, it should be out by the time this video releases. The game clearly needed more polished time. Let me talk about what I currently love in Battlefield 2042 before I just continue to rag on this game, which I can do for quite a while. Portal. Battlefield 2042 is, I feel like, flagship mode that allows us to go back into classic Battlefield games or play styles with old maps. For example, you can play in Battlefield 1942 maps. You can play in Battlefield Bad Company um, 2 maps. Battlefield 3, Conquest. And this allows you to also customize the game exactly how you want. For example, you can do like Battlefield 1 guns versus Battlefield 3 guns. Uh, depending on teams, it doesn't. There's a lot of customization you can do in that, and I feel like that's going to be the highlight of this game for quite a while, because the base game unfortunately does not run well due to all the extra weather effects that they add on top on top of whatever the normal gameplay already is, and then the specialist system, which I will also touch on. Which, my gosh, the specialist system. Battlefield Portal plays well. As you guys can see here, the gameplay on Battlefield Bad Company uh, 2. Uh, one of my favorite, all times favorites, Battlefield games. Uh, that and Battlefield 3, probably top two, top threes, like for sure, up there. Those run well. They keep the old classic uh, class systems with, you know, Medic, Engineers, uh, Assault, and Recon, which, which all have their appropriate guns that they can use. Whether it's like Assault can use um, ARs, uh, Medics can use... Uh, some machine guns, oh, not, not in this game, medics could use light machine guns, engineers use some machine guns, and then recon uses snipers. And everyone plays an important role in the game, and every class feels different because of that, without having to add any special abilities. That's great. If you love the old Battlefield, you're going to love Portal, for sure. There's also Hazard Zone, which is a really good take on, you know, Escape from Tarkov type gameplay and Battle Royale-esque type gameplay. You jump in with a squad. Um, and I feel like this is where actually the specialist system does shine in this game. Um, I, unfortunately, I don't have any gameplay to show on Portal. I, the, free, the few games I did play, unfortunately, was just with me and my buddies. And I didn't have 
time to actually plug in my capture device before everyone logged off. Fun times to be had there for sure. And everyone has to think about which specialist they're going to go out with because that, it actually does change the game quite a bit depending on what kind of specialist you're going out there with. Even if, you know, like... Since it's a little bit more strategic in that sense, you know you're going to have to have a medic out there. So you're going to have some, one of your teammates with a medics, uh, medic supplies, one with maybe armor supplies, or one with focusing on anti-air. So it makes it feel like old battlefields, but in a new take. And I do appreciate that aspect of uh, Hazard Zone. But when we talk about the main game, All Out War, there is quite a few issues I have with this game. So, I'm a Battlefield vet, so I might be in the minority here for players that never played Battlefield before. You might love what they're throwing at you. I don't mind that this game became what, what pretty much what is a Battlefield hero shooter. If you ever played games like Rainbow Six Siege, Overwatch, or Valorant, you know what a hero shooter is. Apex Legends, good example of a battle royale with hero shooter elements. Every class or every specialist or every hero has different abilities that they're bringing to the table. Great. Not necessarily a bad thing. I actually don't mind that aspect too much within this game. What I do mind, however, is they don't really differentiate or fixate what they should do specifically. For example, when you have specialists that should be labeled in the assault class, you can throw a sniper on them. You can throw some machine gun on them. A light machine gun on them. That makes it feel a little weird, right? So, generally in old Battlefield games, you're locked to whatever weapons type that you can have depending on your class. If you're assault, you could have automatic rifles. If you're an engineer, some machine guns. If you're a recon, you can only have sniper rifles or rifles. Now... This change, I don't necessarily mind. Uh, you know, allowing you to be be a little bit more flexible with what you want, play how you want. You should not be locked into a specific style of play based on, or a specific gun type based on what specialist you choose. That I don't necessarily mind. What I do mind is, however, that the classes themselves now are pretty much gone in the sense of you're a specialist. Let's say you're a specialist who specializes in medics. Well, guess what? You don't have to go in there with med packs or medical crates. You don't have to heal your teammates. The game doesn't really visibly show when you should go out there and heal. It, you play how you want. You play uh, engineer class how you want, whether it's going to be, you know, I'm only going to have a rocket launcher. I'm not going to repair vehicles. I'm not going to go out there and, you know, focus on anti-air or focus on destroying tanks. I'm just going to have a rocket launcher just because I want a rocket launcher on any class I want. And this specifically changes the flow of the game. So back, at, back then in the old Battlefield games, you can tell what class they are just by looking at the appearance of the person so you know okay this person has a rocket launcher this person's a sniper so you know how you have to change your play style against them in this game though since anyone can pretty much be anything it actually changes quite a bit because you no longer have that focus you don't know who to focus on anymore since you're a specialist who can have anything on whether it's being proficient at healing or having medical crates or ammo crates in terms of a strategic standpoint you don't know which enemy you should focus on to maximize the damage on the enemy team that's the issue i have with this game there's no indication of who you should focus on it's just i see an enemy I'm going to kill them. That's fine. But it kind of takes away from the Battlefield elements that we all know to love. If you're a Battlefield fan like me, this is not really a welcome change. So, I don't believe, like a lot of other content creators, 
that the specialist system was purely purely brought in for monetization sake. Yes, there is going to be that part. As every different specialist can change different outfits, um, I'm sure down the line, EA is going to start selling different outfits. And, you know, depending on the specialist you choose, it doesn't matter. They're not locked between a specific uh, enemy or ally. So, for example, if you're US versus Russia, for example, the same specialist can be on both. There's no there's no locking them out. Uh, for example, if you think more in line with uh, Call of Duty, uh, you know, the way that they work with their heroes, like in Modern Warfare, you know, there's villains and then there's heroes. Depending on, you know, what you're going against, that's what you can choose to be your character as. And this one, it's not like that. It's everyone's the same specialist. Doesn't matter if you're on the good side or bad side, which also does seem to cause some confusion. Since now that everyone is the same, it's, it's much harder to differentiate who the enemies would actually be. Now, if you're playing normal Battlefield, sure, this isn't generally an issue since you can pretty much tell, you know, who's the enemy because they don't have a blue marker over the head. Okay, that's great. Now, there's also like the lack of hardcore modes in this game. And I can tell why, because uh, once you add hardcore, you take away those indicators, you take away the maps, you take away the HUD. Well, now everyone looks the same. Now, when you kill the guy in front of you, it could have been your teammate because there was no way to actually tell that they were a villain or the enemy team. So, that's the issue with Battlefield 2042. Besides the performance issues which I encountered, which I want to preface, it was only in that specific map that I, I'm po I pointed out there that, that I had extreme frame drops. Every other game mode I had, like on Orbital, later on, it felt fine to a point. Yeah, there were some frame drops here and there. And I didn't really encounter any major weather issues during those games, so that could be a contributor of why the frames didn't drop. But it's just something to be worried about. This game clearly wasn't as polished as it should be for EA DICE. So... Yes, generally Call of Duty, I'm um, not Call of Duty, but Battlefield games don't come out in as good of a shape. You know, like Battlefield 3 had its issues, Battlefield 4 had its issues, Battlefield 1. Uh, it's just, it's unfortunately the Battlefield formula to release your game as buggy as possible and fix it down the line. Maybe a year from now, the game will be such a solid game, but, you know, it should still be unacceptable right so this might be a game i continue to play if they patch it well enough um definitely just for portal alone i love the battlefield portal it makes me feel nostalgic when jumping back into battlefield bad company 2 battlefield 1942 and battlefield 3 maps like caspian border so is this game going to be great i don't know you know this is this is more of a review in progress at this point i will have a definitive answer for you guys in the coming days, weeks, uh, as I get more time with this game. I, as it's multiplayer, I want to make sure I have experienced as much of it as possible before I give any sort of full review or full opinion on this game. But as it currently stands, first impressions within the like with me having the game for the first what two days now, the game has issues. And unfortunately, I don't know if those issues can be resolved anytime soon. My name is Tom. This has been Broken Control. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe here on YouTube. Follow us on Apple Podcasts. We release a podcast every Thursday live around 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.